And that's what I was talking about before, about having a couple of unemployed beavers. It's unlike our society where we live in, where the unemployed just sit on their butt all day. The unemployed beavers in this game want to work. And they will jump up and work the minute they have the opportunity to, which is awesome. Makes it very easy for all of us. Hello and welcome to Timberborn. For my returning viewers, this is a new game to the channel. For my new viewers out there, welcome to Timberborn. This game is a city builder type game. I have looked online and I can't seem, seem to find too many tutorials on this game. So what I'm going to do is start a new game. And there is two factions. Both factions will need their own tutorial. What I'm going to focus on in this tutorial, uh, in this episode, is the folk tales. So we're going to click next. We're going to start on the planes. It does say it's recommended, uh, and there is a reason for that, and I'll get into that once we get into the game here. For this tutorial, I think I'm going to start on the normal, just because that's the one that everyone's going to be pretty much playing. Easy is a little bit easier as you would uh, think it would be. Obviously, it's lower than normal. As you can see, beavers consume less food and water in the easy. And your settlement also starts off with a bit of food and water in the uh, headquarters, if you will. So we're going to start it on uh, normal here. And uh, I'll see you once we get into the game. So once we're in the game here, I'm just going to go ahead and pause this. What we've got going on is I'll go over all the display items. So if we go up into the top left here, we've got the well-being of the beavers. If we open this up, these are the top three that we need to worry about right off the bat. Hunger, thirst, and sleep. They are exactly what they mean. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you want these to be overall well. Uh, if hunger and thirst go down to zero, your beavers start to die. And that is not good. You don't want your beavers to die. Sleep, if this gets to zero and they don't have a rest period yet, they will just pass out wherever they are. You'll see in some playthroughs, you will get uh, beavers that literally just pass out in the middle of a tree stump. So down here, all these other ones, the only ones we're going to look at right now off the bat is the nutritions and the social life. And now there's a reason for these. With this type of beaver that we are playing with, the nutrition will let them live longer and the social life will let them reproduce faster. So those are things that you need to know. When starting on a game, you will want to take a quick little look around of your situations and your landscapes. Everything in the green here, it's close to water, so things will grow here, no problem. Anything in the darker colored areas, things will not grow. So taking that into account when you start can lead you onto a good path or a playthrough. And the reason why I say that is because if you build all your infrastructure in this green zone where you start, you'll have no place to farm either trees or resources like food and stuff. So moving on, we've got the children and adults, exactly how it sounds. Adults, we have seven beavers and we have four children to start. That's good. Adults now can get jobs doing different things. If we click on this building here, we've got district one. We see the outline and that is the area it encompasses without any paths connected to it. I want to show you right now, if we go down into paths and structures, if we make a path, we can delete this later and we drag it all the way down to here. And if we go back, you can see now we have just increased our area. Now that will only work for so long. Eventually you will hit the limit to this building. So all that's meaning is your town that you build, can only be within a certain area, and then you have to have to create a new town. We will get into that later, don't worry. Up here next, we've got our materials. This will pop up with anything like uh, if you start building gears or planks and stuff. That's where this is gonna show up. It will also show wheat and raw potatoes. Like wheat and raw potatoes, if you cook, the potatoes and make a grilled potato, it'll now come into the food slot. So this is food. 
Food just shows you the amount of food that your whole civilization as a whole has. Over here, we've got our logs and we've got water. Once again, self-explanatory. Homeless. This is a big thing for this faction. These beavers reproduce. And that's exactly what they need. They need housing to reproduce. This is a big thing. So if you have, let's say, 10 beavers and you have room for 10 beavers in housing, they will not reproduce. They will reproduce up until all the spots are filled in the uh, spots that they have. So they will not overproduce. They're smart. They don't overpopulate themselves, unlike some. And then down here we have the employment for adults. As you can see there, it says uh, blackets employed adults. You can't employ child workers. We are a civilized society. Um, we right now currently have five unemployed. You'll always want to keep a couple unemployed beavers walking around. To start off with, not so much because you're not going to have the amount of beavers you need to fill every job that you have. But down the road, having unemployed beavers will definitely help you in case one of your beavers just ups and dies on you. And uh, you need that job to be filled immediately. And if you have a beaver on standby who is unemployed currently, you can uh, get everything sorted out at a relatively good fashion. It'll just take them to time to walk over to said job and start plugging away at it. Over, we've got our districts. This uh, comes into more of a play once you expand and you get more than one district or headquarters. We've got our cycles, day, or cycle one, day one. So right now that's just the time and day. The cycles, you've got to worry about droughts. So every uh, 10 to 12 days normally, you will get a dry spell and it'll pop up in this box right here. And that will say three days to a drought. So then you have three days to prepare for all the water to disappear, unless you've taken steps to avoid that. Up here, we've got our time clock. We've got our pause, play, fast forward, and triple fast forward. Right next to that, we've got our hour clock. If I zoom in on this right now, you'll see this spot right above my mouse and this spot right where we start. This is the starting time for the beavers and this is quitting time. So right now the beavers work 16 hour days or 16 hours per day. So this is where they stop and this is where they start. We can change their working hours right here with the plus and minus. So if I click the plus right now, you will see this little thing move. So now we are working into the night. We're working more into the night. And now we're working full 24 hour days. And starting off, I would recommend working your beavers to death. <laughs> they have no time to play around and mess about. Here we've got our hide water. So we can hide the water. It doesn't fully hide it. You will get this view in your building mode. So you'll get the same thing if I come down into wood here, the water hides as well. Over here, it will be blank for some time, but this is your level meter. And what I mean by levels is when you build on top of things, you've got multiple stories and multiple different buildings built on top of each other. This is where you can cycle through and you'll make the top level invisible and the middle level, so on and so forth. This is a basic page of what's going on in a certain building. This one is since it's your district building, it has uh, an extra option here. But you also got the options down here for workers. Some buildings will only have one slot, like a water pump, which we will need. So let's just go ahead and build that. And let's build that right here. It's connected to a path already. And this will start to be built. When you click on it, It'll bring up its tab. Right now it's not built yet. So we have the construction priority. Uh, you can make it a very high priority, very low priority, or you can pause it all together. If you don't want it to be built right now, you can click the pause or the play button up here. If you want to delete the building, you can click delete. So starting off, what we need, what all beavers need is wood. Beavers love wood. And this game also loves wood. Almost everything to do in this game evolves around wood. So when you're starting off, I would recommend pausing the game like I have here. So we're not killing any time. As you can see, our beavers are not moving. They're just sitting there. 
being good little beavers. The children normally lay down a little bit more. And we can come down into the wood. We want a lumberjack flag. And what this flag does is allows beavers to build this and then start to cut down trees. Now that we have the lumberjack flag placed, we need to mark the trees that want to be cut. So we'll click the cut trees option here and then we'll mark the cutting area. Now, as you can see from the in-game uh, icons, use this tool to mark areas of which trees will be cut down. Pretty self-explanatory. You click on an area. Now this only works for the certain level. So if I mark this whole area here, as you can see, it will not go to the area above. So now that everything's in green, these will be all the trees that will be cut down in time. It doesn't happen immediately. It does take time for all these things to happen. Now, what I would recommend doing here, I'm not sure if it's proven or not, but I do it and it normally works out pretty good. You'll want to go into the unmarked tree cutting area and select a couple of spots, just a couple trees at random, kind of around. You don't want to completely clear cut the whole area. You will want to leave a couple of trees left. I'm not sure if that helps make more trees regrow. I would assume it would because that's kind of how trees regrow in the first place. Now that we have all these trees marked to be cut, we will want to cut down these trees uh, eventually as well. And probably all these at some point too. So while you're thinking about it, what you can do is these trees will not regrow because they are dead. If we click on them, Pine. It's dried and died. We can get two logs per pine tree that we cut down, which was one of these or any one of these. Over here, we've got a different style of tree. We've got a maple tree. Maple trees give you eight logs per tree. And over here, we have birch trees. Birch trees give you one log per tree. So back over here under our area, the best thing to do is while you are setting everything up, You'll just literally want to go through and mark all the trees in the immediate area that you think that you're going to be cutting down because it's happened to me multiple times. You completely forget about this step and you just put down a new lumberjack flag and uh, you forget to mark the trees and you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait and they haven't started cutting down any trees and you're wondering why. So we're at this point now we've got all these trees selected. Our beavers need food. So let's create another path in path and structures. It's right here for the path. We'll come across, we'll come up around this uh, indent. And we'll come over to where these berries are. These berries will re grow back on their own pace, but we will want to get away from them as quickly as possible. With this faction, uh, like I said, they are two separate factions right now. This faction does not need berries for anything important other than eating. So we'll put this to play now and we're going to wrap this up to four beavers right now working. So there's more beavers walking back and forth to create things. And now another thing to note while we're at this point, you will want to make sure if this building has four workers on it that leaves one un unemployed beaver now that this section is created and this section is created so if we create anything else we only have one beaver to work with so that is a big thing to remember if you have a bunch of beavers die all at once it's easy to go into a building like this or a hauling lodge which we'll get into later um and just unemploy them all knock them down to one they'll send beavers out and uh, you will get things done you'll get those jobs filled so we've got food and we've got lumber coming down we also need water so water pump we'll bit build that right here and this needs 12 logs as you can see all the beavers are running around and grabbing logs right now these are builders we only have four builders so we can only grab four things at a time and that's our all our builders maxed out so they're grabbing logs and they're building this right now. As you can see, the progress bar is going up as another beaver drops off another log and he will stay and finish and build it. Now we've got a beaver that's running this and we have no unemployed beavers. This 
uh, water pump itself can only hold 15 uh, water. I want to call them liters because I'm Canadian. If you feel uh, like it should be gallons, let me know down below in the comments. But we will definitely want to hold as much water as we can. So we'll want to come in and we'll want to build a small water tank. Now I'm just going to pause this for one second while I go over. There is a couple of different ways of going about this. A, you'll want it fairly close. So when the this gets full, the worker in here can pick up water and move it to the storage. But water, space around the water is always tight. So the space around the water you need for crops and trees. Now, if you start filling this whole section up with water barrels to store water, you've eaten up a lot of space in your green area that could be used for crops and stuff. So as much as it sucks and it kills time, put your water storage things up closer out of the green area. I know it seems counter a bit counterproductive considering this beaver has to then once he gets to 15 come out walk all the way up to here and run back before you can start pumping it again but it'll make sense later on down the road so as we're doing we're building the builders are building this guy's cutting down wood everything's great like i said about the housing we need science and you want to get your science in and out of the way as quickly as possible. So let's just plunk down two of these and build paths up to them. Now you're thinking, Toe Man, that's great. What's the science? So all the things here with red need science points to unlock. So these science boosts produce three science in a time. Now your science bar is up here. I think I skipped over it, but all that does is it takes a worker to go in there and he's an inventor. That's all he is. So every couple of seconds or so, they will produce three science, depending on what time frame you're playing on. So let's prioritize this higher up than the water because we've only got a couple of beavers and we don't need uh, to have water storage right now. We're not coming into a drought, but we definitely need science points. And the reason why we need science points is because once these trees are cut down, we need more lumber. Right now, we've got a fair bit of lumber in the immediate area, and thankfully enough, we have stairs to get up into this area as well, but that's not always the case. You'll want to get your science down as quickly as possible, so you can go into your wood, and you can unlock a forester. But to do that, we're also going to need a lumber mill. So, while we're working on that, we need to start thinking about how we can get a lumber mill. And this is another spot where it gets a little dicey. So we've got to take up a water area and come down into the gear, which is your power. And now you can see all the beavers are thirsty, so they're all going to run down into this and drink water. Now we're down to one again. So you're going to need a water wheel, which is under power. And as you can see, it's got the two arrows on either side. So if we plunk that right there, we go into your wood, and this is the same for any building that requires electricity. That's what this does. It provides electricity. It's a water wheel. It goes around in circles when the water is flowing. We'll click lumber mill, and we'll plunk that right here. Anywhere that gear was showing is where it can show or give power. Now the reason we can either put it this way or the other way, this water wheel produces 180 horsepower, which really should be beaver power, but it at me so now this one is down it will provide power to this building as well without the need of electrical cables which is awesome it makes the whole process a lot easier and that's something after almost 40 hours in this game i actually just learned i had a sneaking suspicion of it before but i learned it for a fact and it is great it's an awesome thing so as long as this building is connected to power this building will be powered through this one here. The one thing you guys got to worry about when building in the water like this is to prioritize something that will be blocked in. So if we didn't have access around either side, we will want to make sure this is prioritized before this. If this building gets built first, your beavers can no longer access this spot to build it. 
seems like a simple thing. It has royally screwed me over a couple times in the past, so that's why I am covering it. So once again, paths and structures, we will want to build a path and make sure those are connected as well. Without paths, your beavers cannot get to it, and uh, that's not good. So, as you can see now, we've got a beaver in making science, and we've got no unemployed beavers. The only reason why we had someone jump right into here is because we had a beaver grow up. Down here is your message board. So, as you can see, day one, or cycle one, day two, uh, so-and-so has grown up. You'll see beavers grow up, be born, and died here. Let me know what's the best thing you have seen a beaver die from down here. Mine was an explosion. This right here, construction lacks materials. You can click on this and it will take you to every building lacking materials at a certain time. So, as you can see, this beaver is cutting down wood as fast as he can and there's no goods in stock. So, another thing that we can do is we can build another lumberjack flag. So, coming from this spot here, we'll just build another path. And it, the game was so nice and provided us a set of stairs that were already made. So we'll come up over into here and we'll click wood again, lumberjack flag, plunk you down there. Builders will go and build that since they're working on a 24 hour cycle. It doesn't matter that it got dark now. But now the problem is we've got no unemployed beavers to get into there. So we'll come into here and we'll fire one. So now that we fired one out of here, you will just automatically go and jump over into this. And that's what I was talking about before, about having a couple of unemployed beavers. It's unlike our society where we live in, where the unemployed just sit on their butt all day. The unemployed beavers in this game want to work. And they will jump up and work the minute they have the opportunity to, which is awesome. Makes it very easy for all of us. So this beaver right now is currently sleeping. This is the problem we have when we run 24 hour cycles. They just pass out wherever they want. At this point in time, we've got food from the berries being collected and picked. And right now they are not doing anything because we have no storage. So he will just sit there idling, not doing anything. So if you really wanted to, you can pause this guy and plunk him in to a beaver with the plus button here. So at least he's building things. And as you can see, a beaver will come and collect food out of this as it needs it. The only thing you gotta watch out for is making sure you always got a stockpile in this little spot. Or you can come down into storage. You've got a log piles under the storage and you also have a small warehouse. A small warehouse can hold anything and everything other than logs of uh, capacity of 200. Right off the bat, I would not recommend getting this. You're gonna more focus on needing water and uh, another big thing is housing. Without the housing, you will not gain more beavers. So, I would recommend building a couple of these small houses out of the way, just like that. These hold three, so that's going to be room for nine. We have currently 11. So, as soon as you get beavers into housing, their life expectancy goes up, which we will definitely want. Because if your beavers start dying right off the bat, it makes it really hard to do anything if you've got no beavers to do work for you. So as it sits right now, once all these get built, we have room for a couple extra beavers. So that means they will start reproducing and we'll start having children. Plus, with the life expectancy, they'll start dropping like flies pretty quick and we will have no one to finish building anything. So now that we've got a couple of projects waiting to be built this is when we start need to actually start to take a step back and realize what is more important right now we've got the water wheel which takes 50 logs which is pretty important that we get these planks being made pretty quickly the lumber mill makes the planks and we need the planks for the forester we currently do not have enough science to unlock the forester we are over halfway there it requires 60 and we have 33 so I am going to prioritize this small water tank up, uh, up to the double up arrow. So it's up next. They will work on anything marked with uh, the highest priority simultaneously. 
So we currently have four beavers working as builders. They will share the load in between them all. So we're going to get some storage for water. And uh, they're going to continue working on the other things as well. One of the big things to start to think about as well is how are we going to hold on to water when the drought happens and comes? Because it's going to come. <laughs> it's uh, it, it happens. So if we go down into landscaping, we've got a dam. And we can build a dam across here if we wanted to. And that will stop the water when there is a drought up here, which is great. As you can see right now, it's yellow, which means we can build it there, but this construction site is too far away from builders to build more paths or new district. So we got a bunch of trees in the way. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle right now. Do we mark these trees just to be destroyed by going into demolish buildings and resources? We have delete buildings, so we can delete buildings just right out, or we can mark resources for demolition. And how we do that is simply enough, click on it and someone will come eventually and uh, just destroy it. You get nothing for it. So let's just clear that for right now. Our forester has not made a path through here yet. The other thing you gotta think about is managing your resources. So each section of dam, so a one by one block takes 20 wood. So we're gonna need a lot of wood to build a dam across. We're looking at eight pieces across, so eight by 20 is 160 logs. I'm not sure if we even have 160 logs here. Let's see if we can find a spot that might be narrower. So right here is seven across, which is a little bit better, but we need to block this off regardless and we will want as much water as we can store. So let's just build this. Oh, I figured that up, didn't I? So I put these in the wrong spot. If we come back over into the demolish buildings and resources, delete buildings, just select all those. It'll pause the game when this menu comes up and click yes. You gotta be careful when doing that because if you try to click this and you click and drag, it's uh, very easy to catch other buildings up. And if you're doing it quickly, it would be a shame to delete something you didn't mean to. So now let's try to put that in the correct spot. I'll start from this side and build that across. I'm saying building, it's not actually being built yet. So now that we have a structure here, we need to build a path across it. So as you build a path across it, that will make it so your beavers can actually cross and build further through. If you don't build the path on top of this, they will build this one and maybe this one, but they will no longer be able to reach the third one in. That leads us to with another dilemma of we cannot control what tree will cut down as it, He's cutting down trees close by to him. He's not cutting down these trees that we need to build the path uh, to the actual project to be able to get beavers to build this. We are on day five already and we haven't got a dam across and we need to have a dam. So when the drought happens, we hold some water back because as you see, we don't have that much storage for water. We need to be able to keep pumping water when there's a drought. So one of the reasons why I was explaining before of putting your water storage further away from the water pump itself is because of a farm. So we jump into a farmhouse here and we'll get this plunked down. You can see the area that it can work. Now that is working within the path network you have established already, but it's not going to be massive. It's never going to be a massive area that each farm can produce something in. This is one of the buildings that I would recommend building in a green zone. Because if we want to build it up in the brown zone or the dark zone up here, we're losing out on a lot of space that could be used for farming. So if we bring this up back into here and get that plunked down, we are still sitting good with 15 berries sitting over here. You just you always got to remember to check on that. This should be a pretty good priority as well. It only takes 25 logs. These guys haven't been started. We've got our second science booth up. So now we're producing double the science. And as you can see, we're playing on regular time 
It does take a while to produce three science at the time. Our houses are not currently being built either, so I'm not sure exactly what they are producing or putting their resources into right now. Maybe the water. Yeah, they're putting them into the, the water storage. So we're going to want to get these trees cut down at some point to be able to get uh, more farming done. So once again, we're going to put another lumberjack flag and don't worry about deleting these after the trees are gone. Once the trees are gone, delete it. It doesn't cost you anything. Just make sure there is no uh, lumber left in it like this guy has. He's got two logs on it. So before you delete it, make sure that it is empty because you don't want to be just throwing resources away. I'm going to make this a top priority because it doesn't cost anything to build, which is awesome. So all it needs is a builder, which would be that guy right there that is running. Oh, maybe not that guy that was running. He wanted to drink. This guy. Nope, that guy works at the water pump. It was this guy. This guy all along. He works at the district center, so he is a builder. He will come down and he will build this. And in a minute, it'll pop up as a lumberjack flag. Oh, and look at that. We've got one employed, unemployed beaver. So guess where our unemployed beaver is going to go? He's going to go right to there. So, once again, before you forget, mark the trees to be cut. I almost fell for my tip before. We're going to want to cut down all those trees. And we're also going to want to make sure the farmhouse gets built. The farmhouse, cool. We're going to have to come down to plant crops. And I would recommend planting carrots for the start. For potatoes and wheat, you need separate buildings to make those uh, actual food. So we're going to start with carrots. And we don't need a massive area to start because we only have 11 beavers to feed. So we're just going to do those for right now. Uh, maybe two extra strips in that spot there. Now, as it sits right now, we've got no storage for anything like that. So this farmhouse itself can only hold about 50 of each product. So it can only hold 50 carrots, which is a good amount for what we need right now. You do not have to worry about crops wilting unless it is a dry season and they uh, dry out. So as long as you can keep this area green, you will never have to worry about them just up and dying on you. So having harvestable crops sitting in the field is fine as long as you're not going through a drought and uh, you still got water running by you. I know I've kind of jumped all over the place here today. As you can see right now, these guys at the district center are running down into the water pump and they'll come back out holding a barrel. So those guys are carrying barrels right now. And why are they doing that? Because if we come up into here, there's this checkbox, transport goods between warehouses when idle. So this is a storage container that needs to be filled. This has materials that can fill it. So if they're not busy building something because there is no product available to be built with, they will just carry on with their day and just move stuff around for you. Coming on to that, we are going to need stuff to survive a drought if one happens. So we will want to start building storage. A small warehouse is fine. We'll just plunk that down right there. Now, with these buildings, anything, if you click on, where'd it go here? If you click on any building here and you hover over it, it'll tell you different things. So the lodge that we've built here, it's a, it's a solid building so other buildings can be built on top of it. So that being said, you can build one on top of another one. You can build those as high as you want. Downfall is about building on top of each other right now to save space for the long run. We do not have, under paths and structures, we don't have the stairs or platforms unlocked yet. I'll go into stairs and platforms uh, in the next episode where I will actually show you one of my series that I already have going through or a playthrough already. And we'll go over everything that I've done so far up until that point. But for right now, this is your basis that you need to worry about. So as you can see, 
This just got built, but we have no unemployed beavers. So we'll just have to come into here and we'll have to fire one of these guys. And we click them down to three, but one of the, all three of these guys are busy at the current moment. So once one of them is finished doing their task, they will jump out of here and they'll jump into here. As you can see, boom. To start off right now with the farmhouse, small enough field, I would not recommend having two farmers in the one farmhouse. You can switch it to planting or harvesting. I would always leave it on planting just because if they harvest something, they have to come back to drop it off. If they're planting something, if they run out and plant something and then harvest something and come back, they're getting two tasks done at the same time. If they're just coming out to here to harvest one, they've got to run all the way back. It's actually quicker. It doesn't look as pretty if they're planting and harvesting at the same time, but it's, uh, it's definitely better in the long run that I've found. So now that we've got enough science, let's come under wood and unlock Forester. Unlock Forester for 60 science. Now there's another thing that you got to worry about is now overlapping. Eventually as we grow, our farm will need to grow as well. So you want to leave enough room for your farm to grow and your forest to grow. So like I said in the first half of this, we don't need these berries. They're good for right now for food up until we get the farmhouse, but carrots are better than berries anyways. So we'll want to put this in a spot where it makes the most amount of sense. As we see right now, if we place it up here, we've got a lot of wasted space where we cannot plant trees in the brown area up there, the dark area. They will not grow. So we'll want to put in a spot where we are maximizing the amount of green space in the area this thing can work in. While not impeding our farm as well. So down the road, our farm could expand out this way more or it can expand down into here more, anywhere. But I think I want to keep this area around here and this area for our trees. So what we can do is we can find a decent spot for this, which will probably be right about there, I would say would probably be the best bang for our buck. I know we've got a lot of wasted space up at the top, but there's not much we can really do about it. Because either way, if we come down into here, we're losing a lot of space up here and vice versa. It's a very hey, tow man here. While editing this, I forgot to mention if I put a path and a set of stairs, which granted we don't have unlocked at this point, closer to the bottom, kind of like where I wanted it, we could have extended the area in the green zone more than we did in the darker zone. But minor details i just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that this is a tutorial and i just want to be as thorough as i can shoot me <laughs> enjoy the rest of the video but this right here will leave us a lot of room where it's not impeding too much on the farmland and we'll also need to make sure that we have our path going to it the problem is right now, this cannot be built until we have planks in stock. So this over here doesn't have a worker. It was just built, but it doesn't have a worker. So we're going to have to fire another guy from the district center to come over and start being a worker over here. But for some reason, he did not go there. So let's fire another guy. And now we should have a worker over here. We don't because there's two people in a farmhouse. Why is there two people in the farmhouse? I don't know. Now we have a worker in the lumber mill, so he will start making planks. We need planks to build the forester post and we need to start getting trees in the ground as quickly as possible because if we run out of trees to cut, we can't expand and we can't continue. So that is my starting guide. We'll get into all these other topics and tabs down here at a later date and what they all do and the pros and cons to them all. But for right now, that's your main goal. Block off a section of water so you can maintain water in this area in a drought. And you're going to want to get planks and science as soon as you can because you're always going to need planks and you're always going to need science until late, late game. 
You're going to want to get the Forester post set up as quickly as possible. You're going to want to work your beavers to death, work them 24 hours a day. Water is going to be in abundance and food is going to be in abundance right at the beginning. Get as much hours of work out of them as you can right off the bat. You can always put down more than one lumberjack flag as well. So if we wanted to clear this area faster, place another lumberjack flag down there and then you'll have two beavers clearing the same area at the same time. The setup I've got here right now, it's good, but it's not great because we got three different beavers cutting wood in separate areas. So that means the builders have to walk over to here to get a piece of wood, then maybe over to here to get a piece of wood, or over to here to get a piece of wood. If you can keep everything centralized right off the bat, it'll be better uh, long term, or short term, sorry. It'll be a lot better short term, uh, just saves time. Beavers have to walk less. Downfall of them working 24 hours. If they pass out and they start to get hungry, they can die in their sleep. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but uh, they're starving. <laughs> they don't wake up when they get hungry. So, as long as this guy wakes up in time to go and get something to eat, he'll survive. But if he does not wake up in time to eat, he'll starve to death. And on that note, I'm going to leave you. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully it's uh taught you something it will definitely get more in depth next time uh when we take a deeper look into a map that i've established already and we can see where i started and where i've expanded to to try to give you a better understanding of how the long-term game goes as well one last thing if we come down here this is a barrier we can mark it to be demolished as long as it's within a path area, one of your district workers will eventually come and demolish this, and this will let water flow into this pool here. You can use this to pump water out of, or just to expand your green area out further. Because as you can see, the green area comes out to about here, with it back at the riverbank. But if you blow this out, the green area will probably come out to here. So, that means the whole time I've been saying build stuff in the dark area, we had an option to make it green all along. So that's an overlook on my part, and I apologize for that. But it is what it is. Things happen. We are not perfect. But as you can see right now, this guy is deleting that barrier, and water has flown in, and look how much more green spot or space we have. We are on day seven, coming to the end of day seven already. And we've got pretty decent progress being made. We still don't have houses built yet. They are still fairly low on the priority. I am going to mark these up a little bit. There's only so much time in the day. Now, what I just did there, not that great. And you'll only want to prioritize one or the other. You don't want to prioritize them all because then it's no change. You'll want one to get finished first and then the next and then the next. We're just waiting for this beaver to cut down these trees to build the path before we can start working on the dam. We are getting late in the cycle, so we're going to definitely need to stockpile as much water as we can to hopefully make it through this dry season. But with that said, guys, hopefully this helps you. If you've got any questions about how to play this game or to just starting out, Drop them down below in the comments. I do read them all. I will respond to as many as I can. I do have a full-time job, so it might not be right as soon as you comment it, but I will definitely read them and get back to you as soon as I can. With that said, guys, like I said before, questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this or you want to see more of this game. I do normally farming simulator content. Uh, I am taking a break for that for this week. So no farming simulator videos coming out this week. That will continue next week. Hopefully. Knock on wood. With that said, guys, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.